let's reaffirm our faith using the historic Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our praise will be singing, bind us together, and our ushers will be coming through the aisles. Let us sing together. God's forgiven and reconciled people offer to one another the gifts of love and peace, forgiveness, reconciliation by saying together, the peace of Christ be with you. Peace of Christ. Friends, our epistle lesson is from Paul's letter to the Romans, the beginnings of the chapter 12. Justin Stoneberg is going to read her lesson. Thank you, Justin. Romans 12, 1 through 8. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace of God given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. <coughs> For as in one body we have many members, and not all of the members have the same function. So we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy and proportion of faith, ministry and ministering, the teacher and teaching, the exhorter and exhortation, the giver and generosity, the leader and diligence, the compassionate and cheerfulness. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God.
this mountain can't be moved. They say these chains will never break, but they don't know you like we do. There is power in your name. We've heard that there is no way through. We've heard Okay, we're asking our children to come forward now. Pastor Suzanne has something for them, I believe. Kindergartners and my preschoolers and my first graders. Second. Oof. Oof. Here comes another kindergartner. Come on, sweet girl. I have a song to teach you today that I learned when I was y'all sizes. Ow. Ow, yeah. And it. Hey, look at my shoes. Those baby shocks. I love baby shocks. I do. I do, but can you, here, I need to see, can you make a fist and a hand? Because we're going to go like this at some point, okay? Can you do that? That looks like rock, paper, scissors. It does look like rock, paper, scissors, because it's a song about rock. Yeah, rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. 
But, but, my like bracelet that. but I'm going to tell you about somebody named Rock. So I'm going to read a scripture in a little while to the big kids. And, and I'm a big kid. You are the biggest. And you are. They're all, you know, smaller kids. All right. So the song goes, the baby. who do the no, people no. say I am? Who do the people say I am? Some say Moses, other Jeremiah, but Key. my Lord, you're Key. my savior. Key. Yeah. No, no, no. My Lord. And then Lord. Jesus says, Simon Peter, baby, guess right? I'll have to call oh, you. Ready? Rock, 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 Peter, rock, Peter, rock, 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 Peter, rock, rock. That's the best part of the song. So let's do the rock, rock part again. Adults, let's do it. Rock, rock, Peter, rock, Peter, rock, 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 Peter, rock, rock. That was a VBS song from the 1990s. <laughs> Last century even. Aren't we classy? He's a baby. He's a baby. Last millen don't say that. Last millennium. Because the song tells us, the song tells us Jesus says to his disciples, who do folks say that I am? Do they know my name? And Peter answers correctly. He says, What's your name? my name is Susanna. But Peter says, you are the Lord, my Savior. Oh, look at the, my face. And what Jesus tells him, he says, hey. hey, oh, hold up, hold up. He says, Simon, listen, say Simon. 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 Peter. Oh, uh, oh, I'm Simon from the chipmunks. Simon the chipmunks. This is a different Simon. Simon Peter, and Peter means rock. 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 Because, and he says, Peter, you, you are a rock that I'm going to build my church on. Claire, so Claire says, huh. It's because Peter's faith was strong like a rock. And sometimes Peter tripped over rocks too in his faith. But that's okay. Oh, um, who because made me glasses? Hey, yes, baby. Because who made me glasses? We always I learned always got to tell people who Jesus is, and Jesus always tells us who Jesus we is are. Our father, like God. Jesus yeah. is our Father, like God, and Jesus says to us that He loves us. So should we do the rock one more time? Because it's the best one. Rock, rock, Peter, rock. Peter rock rock. rock, 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 Peter rock, rock. So I want you to remember Peter is a rock and that God loves you. Let's pray real quick. Let's fold our hands and bow our heads. Thank you, God, for all of our little ones and for the ways that they tell us who you are, God. Remind us this week through them and may they remember that God loves them. Amen. Great amen. job. That was only amen. As a good amen. Amen. We are off to Children's Church. And do we have a nursery helper today signed up on the board? No. No? I think we do. Yes, Melissa. Thank you, ma'am. Let's. Oh, Gunner's gone. He's ready to go. Thank you. You're in third grade? Oh my goodness. Thank you. Okay, let's go to God in prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, for all that it brings, uh, for each one of us, for all it brings for your people everywhere, for all it brings for your world. We thank you for watching over us, for hoping for us, uh, for giving to us uh, all that we need, uh, for saving us, and for allowing us to be those that would 
be really sent into a world to help folk know who your son, our Savior, is. We thank you for his call upon our lives and for every way your Holy Spirit helps us to answer in good and positive ways. We ask this day that you would help all of us to remember in our prayers those that you invite us to love, to care for, to be concerned about. We especially remember those who suffer disease or illness, those who you raise up to work in healing ministries. We pray for those who have suffered losses of any kind and especially pray for those who, for whatever reason, might have lost their way. Raise up folk to share your compassion and concern and raise up people to show your way. We're thankful for being gathered right now. We're thankful to, uh, to be able to, to watch these children. We're thankful to be able to be uh, together with our church friends. We're thankful for people who bring gift of music Sunday after Sunday and sometimes special Sundays. And we're thankful that we are uh, blessed to be gathered to worship you. We pray now that as your word is read and proclaimed that we might respond in good and powerful ways. And we ask you for every blessing as we pray as your son, our savior, has taught us, your children, to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from Matthew. We are in the 16th chapter, and we are starting in verse 13, going to verse 20. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us go to God once more in prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray that the things that bind us, Lord, the concerns, the distractions, the things that pull on our mind and our hearts, Lord, we ask that you would help us now release those, knowing that you 
are more than capable of carrying it, that you can create a space of Sabbath and of rest, a time to be with you here with our hearts and our minds. Father God, we remember those that we are worshiping with together, the children within this building, Lord, those who worship with us at a distance, and Lord, the ones that will come to worship with us one day. We pray that your Holy Spirit would continue to pour down upon us to bless our church, to raise up helpers along the way. Now I invite you to pray for me and with me that may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, that all that we do, Lord, be to you and you alone. Amen. If you were to take somebody to the most American place, and don't say like Golden Corral, okay, don't say Golden Corral, but like if you were tasked with, you have to take them like out of all of America, you're going to take them to one location and you're like, this is America. Okay, before I ask, so I thought about it on the way here. If I were in France, where would I take you? I thought about it. Eiffel Tower. Immediately. I mean, it's only 1889. You know, it's, it's newer. But if I took you to the Eiffel Tower and I said, c'est la France, you'd be like, oh, oui, oui, c'est la France. Right? You'd be like, ah, this is France. So where is that for you in the United States of America? The Smithsonian. Fancy. Oh, good. Ooh. This low note. <laughs> This lo I think maybe that was the wrong answer, Becca. <laughs> I, think, I think Bob Barker in heaven is saying, come on down, you're wrong. <laughs> you're wrong. <laughs> almost, almost. So Smithsonian, where else? Statue of Liberty. Oh, that's a good one. Grand Canyon. What? It does tie in France. It does. I thought you said the Grand Canyon was in France, and I said, ah, uh, c'est intéressant. That would be pretty big. Uh, Mount Rushmore, maybe? The White House? Disney. Disney. I mean, she's not wrong. A baseball game. Okay. McDonald's. Interesting. I've noticed no one said the White House or Congress. Walmart, I think maybe we're over the White House and Congress in general for the past <laughs> few decades, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's passe. It is, it is. The circus, you could take them to the, that is American, actually. So, Caesarea Philippi. Jesus walks his disciples there. Doesn't sound very much like a Jewish name, does it not? So, Herod. A while before Jesus, Herod, he builds a temple there. A Jewish temple? No, no, a Roman temple, Caesarea Philippi, in honor of Caesar, right? It's not Caesar salad, Caesar. This would be like if uh, we took somebody to the White House and it was called the George Washington. So, uh, this, is, this is a place of military might. It's a place of socioeconomics. It's this pagan location. There's this cave there, the Cave of Pan, where they they call it the Gates of Hades, and they're making sacrifices all day long there. It is Roman authority in the Jewish world, right? And so imagine Jesus takes you to Walmart, to Disney, to Mount Rushmore, to a baseball game, and all of the American might is there, the military and the politicians and the money's there and, you know, the idols that we create are all right there. And in the midst of that, you, an American, Jesus is asking you, who do you serve? Is he not? Who do these people say that I am? Great song from the 90s. Great song. 
And the people say, Jeremiah, maybe you're Elijah come back to life. You must be one of those really weird prophets like John the Baptist who eats locusts and is out in the wilderness. You're some guy. We don't really know what you are. And Jesus pushes further. He says, well, who do you say that I am? Peter gets it right, does he not? He says, you are the Messiah. You are the anointed one. You are the one promised by God throughout time that will come and will raise people out of oppression. You will level Mount Rushmore, the Walmart, the McDonald's. I can't think of the White House. You will level it. You are above all of this money and military might and, and sacrifice and oppression. You are above it, Lord. And I'll say it not just in my house when I'm alone and no one can hear me. I'm going to say it on the front steps of Congress that I serve you, not them. I mean, he could be murdered for that immediately. Immediately, without trial, because he's not a Roman citizen. But he says, you are my Messiah. You are the son of the living God. And we love to talk about the rock, rock. That's the best part of the song, right? Rock, rock, Peter, rock. On you, and Matthew only says church twice here. It's ekklesia is the fancy Greek word. It means an assembly. It doesn't necessarily mean these buildings, church buildings or denominations. But upon you, I will build my people. That something else is coming. Something bigger than Caesarea Philippi or Walmart or Disney. Something bigger. Now, something you need to know about this place, too, is, is when Matthew is being written after Jesus has died and been raised again, the temple in Jerusalem is torn apart in the year 70, demolished by the government, by the Romans. And where, do, where does the military go to have a party afterwards? Caesarea Philippi. We spend our lives as people, regardless of the year or the nationality or the time period, we, we spend our lives trying to figure out who we are, do we not? Some of the greatest thinkers in the world, you know, are so beloved because, because they really struggled with what does it mean to be a person? What does it mean to have wants? How do you identify yourself? When you go and meet somebody new at the Walmart, what do you say? If someone asks, who are you? You might not answer. You might say, this is a trick. But you might say, I'm Susanna. I'm an associate pastor. I might have to clarify these days. I'm a United Methodist. I'm a mom of four kids. And today, friends, my hair is about to pull out of my head. I love my babies, but it is a hard day. I'm an American, I've got a college education, I have a pet chicken and a pet duck. Some might say I'm a Taurus, I'm a Gemini, I'm a Republican, I'm a voter, I'm an investor, I'm a CEO, I am what my bank account is. But here's the thing. You will never know who you are if you do not know your creator. You just can't fully. And the beautiful thing is, is we all have a different understanding of who Jesus is. We all come with different life experiences. Some of us have have faced cancer 
and know that God is the sustainer. Some of us have faced mourning and know that God is the healer and protector. Some of us know that God is a teacher. God is a healer. God is the lover of my soul. And none of those answers are incorrect. And so this morning, we're going to do something a little different. Because I'm going to ask you, and knowing there's no wrong answer, I'm going to ask you, who do you say the I am is? And so, bear with me while I pull a Vanna White. I don't know what's with the game shows this morning, but they're just like right on the tip of my tongue. Bear with me. Ooh. You thought I'd drop it, but I did not. For those who cannot see, Jesus asks, who do the people say I am? And I like to think the text was polite. Jeremiah, John the Baptist, a prophet. Some people might have said a madman, a, a troublesome character for the Roman Empire and the temple. Who knows what the Sadducees would have said at the moment or what they'd say later. later. This is my question for you today. And I'm inviting you to be vulnerable and honest. Who do you say Jesus is? And as you think on that, I'm going to invite folks to come forward to take a sticky note. I want you to write it down. And Pat Wilson said, uh-oh, participation. And if you are if you are nervous about coming forward, I will come get it from you. But I want to know, who does Highland Church, this ecclesia, this body of Christ built on the faith of Peter and on the ones who have come before us, who do we say that the I am is? Knowing there's no wrong answer, And knowing that if you need help bringing it forward, I can help you. Becca, would you help me pass out some sticky notes? And I have pens. Vicki, would you help me, darling? Let's get some pens. Elvin, my love, would you play the last hymn quietly? They're very nervous that I've asked them to participate, and it may give them a sense of peace. It may.
everyone had a chance that wants to participate. Does, uh, David wants me to ask, has everyone had a chance who does not want to participate? <laughs> I think that's more inclusive language, I guess. <laughs> well, friends, this week I'm going to make a collage of this on one of our bulletin boards. Okay, so I'm not, if you're panicked, someone did mention to me, you're not going to read all of them, are you, right now? Don't worry, you'll beat the Baptist to the food, don't worry. <laughs> but here a, here a few, what does the ecclesia, the body of Christ, the assembly built upon the faith of Peter and the ones who have come before us, given by the grace of God, not through our own understanding, but by the mercy of our Lord, who do we say Jesus is? We have a lot of folks saying that Jesus is the Son of God, the Word, that He is our Savior, our Lord, He is our friend, He is my peace, my power, my God. He's the Savior, Redeemer. Savior not just of Highland, but Savior of the world. I am a child of God. Ooh, we're going to hold on to that one. Jesus is my guide, the forgiver, the one, the caller. Ooh, doesn't that give you some theological tingles right there? Ooh, the caller. And that God, that our Savior Jesus Christ is love. From your own experiences through your life, through the witness of others who have loved God and been loved by God, and, and, and side note, there's nobody in this world that God doesn't love. But through those saints, they taught you who God is. Through your experiences, you have found who God is. And this is who God is. And if this is who God is, that defines who we are are if the i am is love we cannot be unloving if the god of all of us is the forgiver we cannot be unforgiving to know god is to know who we are called to be and let me let me hold on to this friends God is our caller. And he's the one who allows me to be imperfect. And through his forgiveness and through his love, I have a guide who helps me live out my days as a child of God. So friends, I invite you this week, it's always good to have a small goal, this week, I want you really to wrestle with who do you say that God is? And I want you to name the ways that God has helped you become the person that you are. Here's our number one thing. If we know that this is Jesus, we have to know that there are people out there who do not know that. So how are we going to share this love, this forgiveness, this grace, this mercy with one another? Whether it's on the steps of Caesarea Philippi, AKA Disney, whether it's within this building or wherever we may go this week. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able and sing with me that I'm going to live so that God can use me.
Thank you, Elvin. Receive these words of blessings. May the God of love, our Messiah, the Son of God, the one who loves us, protects us, guides us, who calls us his own. May you feel his love wrap around you as it guides you to testify, to witness to who he is in a world that desperately needs it. Amen. <laughs>